Hi, I'm Bea Kupin, and you are watching 36 Years, where we talk about Philippine news, democracy, and politics. On May 9, the Philippines elected President Ferdinand Marcos Jr. as president. He is the second Marcos to hold the post, the first being his father, the dictator, who was ousted from power on February 25, 1986, in what is now known as the People Power Revolution. That was 36 years ago. Here, we try to answer the question, where is Philippine democracy heading 36 years after the revolution? Welcome to 36 Years, available on Rappler's social media pages and on wherever you listen to podcasts. This week, we are joined by Congressman Zia Alonto Adyong, who represents the 1st District of Lanao del Sur, We've talked about Mindanao in the show in the past, but this week we'll focus on the Bangsamoro. Congressman Adyong was a member of the Regional Legislative Assembly of the PARM and was named a member of the Bangsamoro Transition Authority in 2019. But first, the headlines. PBBM meets Blinken, La meets Chinese ambassador. It's been a busy week for diplomacy inside Malacanang as in sa loob ng Malacanang Palace mismo. Over the weekend, President Marcos met with the United States top diplomat secretary of state, Antony Blinken, amid rising tensions in the region. Blinken thus far is the highest ranking U.S. official to travel to the Philippines since Marcos assumed the presidency. Stakes are high. There's the ongoing Russian invasion of Ukraine and, more recently, U.S. House of Representatives Speaker Nancy Pelosi's visit to Taiwan, the latter of which prompted China to take retaliatory military exercises around the self-governing island it claims as its own. Said Marcos of Pelosi's controversial visit, to be perfectly candid, I did not think it raised the intensity, it just demonstrated it, how the intensity of that conflict has been. It actually has been at that level for a good while, but we got used to it and put it aside. Again, that's Marcos referring to Pelosi's visit. Blinken, meanwhile, said the U.S. was committed to the Mutual Defense Treaty, which means both the U.S. and the Philippines have committed to defend each other in the event of an attack. Meanwhile, First Lady Liza Araneta Marcos on August 4 hosted Chinese ambassador to the Philippines, Juan Chilian, at a luncheon in Malacanang. Then the day prior, August 3, the First Lady also hosted Lady Ambassadors also in the palace. Araneta Marcos is the country's first First Lady in a really long time, over two decades. The last president, Rodrigo Duterte, had an ex-wife and a long-term partner, but neither was formally referred to as First Lady. Araneta Marcos is a lawyer, a law professor, and played a key role in the 2022 campaign of her husband. Government numbers indicate more workers are employed full-time in June, but inflation or the increase of prices of goods are still holding back labor market recovery. Data released by the Philippine Statistics Authority on Monday, August 8, showed the country's underemployment rate went down from May to June. Full-time employment increased, while part-time workers declined compared to this time last year. Mean hours of work improved from 39 hours in June 2021 to 40.3 hours in June 2022. But Ralph Vivas reports, while employment figures improved, there are indications that inflation is threatening the recovery of the labor market. Jobs in wholesale and retail trade posted the sharpest drop, shedding 1.2 million jobs from 10.94 million in May to 9.72 million in June. Inflation in June jumped to 6.1% and further went up to 6.4% in July, driven mainly by increases in food and transport prices. If you're watching this, you might likely feel that rise. Read more from Ralph Vivas' report on Rappler. We'll link it in this page. Now on to the interview. Hello, Congressman Adyong. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for your time today. Hi, Bea. Let's go straight. It's nice to be in your show. Thank you. Okay, let's go straight to the bill that you filed recently, an act protecting the rights of internally displaced persons. A quick um, summary lang siguro, and, and maybe hopefully we can link to this uh, these data. No? Um, UN OCHA estimates over 22,000 families remain displaced in Mindanao, specifically in Lano del Sur. 17,000 families still displaced due to Marawi. Um, Siyempre, gets ng mga tao yung definition ng, ng dis internally displaced. Pero 
as someone who's seen it firsthand, experienced it firsthand, what does it mean to be displaced? Yeah, uh, sabi nga nila, the best, your best teacher is your, is your experience, no? And for the past five years, oh no, six years na ata, no? Uh, I've been, a, I've been, a, I've been part of the so-called number. I've been displaced for more than six years na since the start of the siege. Yung, yung Bea, kasi yung IDP is not a new terminology, no? Uh, parati natin ito nalilinig. And in most cases, uh, not only in Marawi but all over the Philippines, we have volumes of people due to because of calamities, either you know usually natural calamities. Naikita natin yung volume of people uh, uh, forcibly, no, leaving their homes. So I think it only exacerbated, no, uh, when Marawi happened, when Marawi uh, siege happened, the call for a measure that would institutionalize the support system for the IDPs, for the internally displaced persons, have reached, point, have reached a point where the Congress needs to discuss, ventilate the issue, and, and then come up with a, with a solution that would permanently address uh, the case of the problems that beset our IDPs. Na, nasabi mo nga, no, yung number na yan, kasi hindi lang mm. actually Marawi, no, yung nakita yeah. yung IDPs, but even prior to Marawi, see, they have been cases of armed conflicts, displacement, no, for several years over, nakikita natin. And uh, yung mga IDP cases kasi, uh, hindi lang dapat natin sila i-define on that particular moment where they were forced to leave, but how they would live hmm. no, outside of their communities. I think that's the gap that we need to address. Uh, nakikita natin, the government uh, is coming up, coming into the picture, uh, yung mga ayuda, uh, mm-hmm. nagre-release sila ng mga uh, mga interventions no uh so forced out from the quick relief fund no kapasok ang BSWD mm-hmm. on the first 72 hours of the calamity strikes and then saka pa uh long term no intervention but after a couple of months or a couple of years paano sila how do they yeah. live yeah. no uh, yung nang, actually yung gap na kailangan natin i-address. Their access to education once they are, they, mm. they think that they need to res, uh, resettle in other areas. No? Kasi pag na-place ka, Bea, it's not really leaving your homes or your properties. It's also actually leaving your opportunities yeah. uh, that you have been accustomed to, no? where yeah. you used to reside. So the opportunity yeah. is lost, uh, livelihood is lost, everything. So it's yeah. it's a it's technically it's starting up again. It's yeah. starting with your own lives again, back to zero. So sometimes, yeah. like in my case, no IDP, because in the case of Marawi, let's put it in the perspective of Marawi. Uh, mm-hmm. Hindi sila makabalik balik agad agad. No? Hindi ito tayo. Yeah. Food, dol, yeah. kung saan yeah. couple of months kung pwede na sila bumalik. Ito ay armed conflict, no brought about by man-made calamity. So it's hard really yeah. for the especially those residing in the 24 barangays that are considered yeah. highly affected, highly destroyed, to return back and reintegrate in their community. So most yeah. of them resettle in some areas, no, some other areas, temporarily. Sometimes people do feel that they need to permanently reside and resettle in some yeah. other areas. So that's the problem. What type of intervention for the government needs to put up uh, in order for the people, uh, those IDPs, to have at least an easier way of living or starting up again back from back to zero. Mm-hmm. Uh, so naisip natin, Bea, I think the, uh, Congress is the perfect venue to discuss that, where we can ventilate the concerns of the IDPs. Yeah. Because not only Congress has the power to legislate and enact laws and yeah. introduce a brand new system on issues that pop, that pop up every now and then, but Congress also is mandated by the Constitution no? uh, under yeah. Section 1, Article 13 of the Philippine Constitution, where it says that the Congress should give highest priority, no? highest priority uh, to enact laws that would enhance the rights of the people to dignity uh, and reduce mm-hmm. social, economic, and political inequalities. And I, I think we've seen it in the past, uh, again, putting into the perspective of Marawi, what happened to Marawi. The inequality that it has caused, no, both socially, economically, no, 
ito sa mga tao na nasa nagka. And just recently, no, I want to go back in Abra. What happened a uh, few years ago in Abra? There are quite a number of uh, residents, no, that have uh, have been, uh, you know, forcibly vacated their properties and their houses because of the earthquake. And now residing in some other people's houses, mga pamilya. Yeah. I know it's it's okay to other people, but how long? It's not really yeah. the map. Uh, the obligation of your friends, of your family yeah. members, uh, to accommodate you and to you know to open up their doors. That's a good quality of being a Filipino to accommodate them. But it should be, uh, yeah. it should be a state policy and the work of the government uh, to yeah. bridge those gaps. No, but in certain number of years, I they've been living outside of their community for a certain number yeah. of years. Na hindi na masusustain ng ayuda ng short term. No short term responses, emergency responses. Hindi na ma masusustain ng mga LGUs kung saan sila nag-reside. What mm-hmm. is in store for them? The government is going yeah. to step in and come up with a solution in order to address this. Yeah. Uh, we'll link to the full text as filed probably within the story page of this episode. No? Um, and, and thank you for pointing out na parang it's not just about kung baga being uprooted, um, losing, to me, in, in covering, um, I, I wasn't able to cover the Marawi siege, but I covered the, the Abra earthquake, the aftermath, and, and other typhoons. But it's also the loss of the capacity to dream. Parang mahirap mag-imagine ng future. Exactly. Kung, yeah? Exactly. Kasi, every, yeah. Yeah, everything is lost. Eh. Parang, uh, especially in our case, no? ang mga Maranao, no? We are tied up with the land. You know, it, land is very, very uh, important to us. It's actually the source of our identity. That's why you have, in the issue of peace process, you have the issue of an ancestral domain because that's how we mm-hmm. value land. Uh, and so, yeah. pag nat- ma- nawala kami doon sa area na iyon, no? uh, feeling namin everything also is, ano, starts to crumble. No? You, you mentioned yeah. about dreams and aspirations yeah, and yeah. hopes. Uh, dumo, dumo babae, dumo babae ito, no? yeah. and, and ultimately it affects our own understanding of ourselves uh, paano ba kami magiging uh, epektibo no? uh, sa yeah. community namin how, do, how can we contribute if all these opportunities are not available to us so that's exactly the, par- the paradigm no? No, um, the, the perspective no? the optics of what an IT really uh, are in no yung mindset, yeah. yung framework, uh, yung mind, uh, frame of mind, na everything yeah. is lost. No? And then, yeah. it will all, tapos mas, mas magiging mag-exacerbate pa, uh, pag yeah. for a person uh, living outside, temporarily uh, residing in an area where ultimately he or she needs to uh, be more industrious, be more uh, in, in genuine in terms of finding livelihood, the more frustration it would, uh, the more the frustration yeah. deepens. Yeah. So, kailangan talaga ng intervention ng, na- ng national government. Especially sa amin, sa mga case namin, marami pa kaya, kaya sa amin na nangangailangan ng mga psychological intervention. Yeah. Because we do not know yeah. exactly the numbers of how many people are suffering. So, these are nuances, I guess, no? that I think that the, the Congress also, uh, it's, it's about time that Congress also needs to pick yeah. up and then discuss. Thoroughly. Yeah. Yeah, we will do. Uh, we'll talk about Marawi specifically, uh, Congressman, uh, in a little bit. But I, I want to also. Uh, I mean, obviously, ako, I, I'm I'm in favor of, of of legislation that would protect internally displaced people. But maybe um, I also start to wonder. No, parang you mentioned that you know that the Filipino were very accommodating. If if we know a friend or a loved one who is in trouble. Uh, kung kahanggat sa kaya, sa saklolo tayo. But if you think about it, we are a very generous and kind nation. Um, but in a lot of ways, we're very cruel. Especially to the people na pinaka-lugi. Kung baga, di ba? Yung mga nas- Parang ang, ang daming, ang daming napapabayaan uh, in, in Philippine society. So my question is, like, when when we push for legislation to protect internally displaced people, where does the legislation stop? Or ano yung hanggana ng legislation? And where does um, behavioral or cultural change need to happen as well? 
Well, I, I think it starts with ano, no, the system kasi eh, hmm. as, a, as a way of response, no? By through, um, let's say, reforming the, the, the culture, no? It also needs to institutionalize reform, uh, systematic, no? Uh, reform. So that comes in uh, the issue of uh, legislation. So I think it would. It's a guide, no? It's a guide for people to uh, really respond in such a way that the legislation promotes, like Aliba, you see, we sometimes we are very cruel, uh, although we are very accommodating. Sometimes natin yung malalaki, Congress, kasi the House of Representatives, kasi it's a it's an embodiment of all uh, the concerns of the entire nation, no? Kasi our we, we go there to represent uh, not only yung collective uh, issue on national interest, etc., national security, but we also represent our distinct uh, concerns in our provinces. So I guess by by trying to ano uh, legislate. Uh, and then having the support of the majority of your peers, you would be able to at least set the guidelines on improve you know, our lot, not only our lot, but how we improve yeah. the perception of the people that are subject to certain yeah. rules and certain laws that are to be enacted by Congress. So I guess it's also a way of guiding the culture in, in going through yeah. a more, uh, how do you say, in more improved, improve, and to see at makita dahil nire-represent natin ang bawat distrito namin, the commonality is among our districts. No? Uh, you talk about the marginalized sector. So it's not only happening in my district, but it can it also is happening across yeah. no, in many other districts yeah. and many other provinces. So we go to now to consolidating all our uh, all our commonalities and then come up with a bigger solution in order to address yeah. that. Yeah, I mean, if you think about it, this will also extend to those displaced by climate change. Uh, but, but that's another topic altogether. Uh, Congressman, siguro nabanggit na rin kanina, no? It's uh, five five years, almost six years um, since the Marawi se- the, the, the siege started. Um, and I th- think, and I like that you point, yeah, and I like that you pointed out nga na parang, and I think, Bakit it's also a fault of the media that we forget that more than being a chamber wherein national legislation is created and refined, parang ultimately the House of Representatives is supposed to be a House of Representatives. Um, kung baga bit-bit mo dapat yung constituency mo sa batasang pambansa. Sir, could you paint us a picture of Marawi five years, almost six years later? Yeah. Um, well, kung pupunta kayo sa main battle, yung sila, sorry, um, Maa, no most affected area, there are substantial improvements naman. No? Like yung mga public facilities, uh, they are started now to, uh, actually, they have already been, ano, they have already series of uh, uh, ribbon cuttings. Uh, yung, sa, yung complex, sports complex, stadium, natapos na yan. Uh, I think ongoing pa rin yung market complex no these are big these are major infrastructures no uh, ongoing din ang construction ng um, centralized school ng uh, Marawi no remember there are quite a number of public schools uh, and also private schools no na, na damaged yan within the most affected area so you can see there are there is a a, a improvement in terms of the infra no infrastructure yeah. uh, component of the ma- under the master plan but uh, as I've said many times over, no, every time na interview tayo, I've all I've mm. been very consistent in my uh, in my appeal that we should look at this not on the aesthetic wise, no. I mean, I'm, I'm yeah. referring to the infrastructure uh, yeah. component of the whole master plan because during the time when we were planning out how do we respond and we sustain our efforts. In, in addressing the issue of the IDPs and Marawi, etc., we, we come up with a more comprehensive master plan. No? Uh, and uh, infrastructure component is just one. Uh, we also talk about the issue on peace and order, livelihood yeah. assistance, um, uh, what's called this, um, uh, uh, health, no? uh, you know, talking about health. <laughs> Marawi City is actually facing multiple crises, no? Plural yeah. form because uh, yeah. of the pandemic and then in the ongoing. 
So, y- yun ang, y- these are the things that are not apparent in the eye, that you don't see, yeah. you don't feel, that it is doing, ano, something is, you know, something is, um, is, is in work here. Kasi pag sa infrastructure, you can, obviously, you can see it eh, from afar. Ah, mayroong improvement. But yeah. other, I think other components of the master plan, uh, should be given equal ano, attention to. Uh, so I think that's the that's where this legislation comes from. What's causing these delays, sir? Uh, I I know this is easier said than done na, to 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 rehabilitate in, in any in in lot of other situations. Pero in in the case specific case of Marawi, what's what's causing these delays, and perhaps how can national and local government hurdle these? Well, there are several levels, no. I think there's a, a, a damning variations involved, eh, no. Uh, una budget, of course. Mm-hmm. Task Force Bangon Marawi is uh, cre- was, was created by virtue of, of an administrative order. Uh, yeah. I don't think Task Force Bangon Marawi currently has the absorptive capacity in terms of handling mm-hmm. its own specific budget. <laughs> Remember, these yeah. are uh, interagency framework, no. Yeah. So they are, it's actually, uh, the budget actually comes from, I think, the OCD, the Office of the Civil yeah. and Defense. So that, I do not know how they would pull out the budget. Uh, do they do this uh, resource coming from, or these, are these resources coming from the OCD intended to reconstruct the damaged properties? No? But as far as other agencies is concerned, I don't think also the PFBM also has the power to obligate each agency mm. to put up or come up with a uh, with a budget that is solely intended to for Marawi intervention, mm. so that is that is the the area where I think we need to revisit no? because it's an administrative yeah. order pulling out uh, yeah. all these things. So all the departments, because has uh, has each department has its own priorities so based on their annual of budget. Right? They have already yeah. put, so there is no specific program that is intended solely to address what is uh, prescribed uh, under the master plan in terms of all the other areas covered uh, by the uh, no, by the rehabilitation because we identified your short term long term and sustainable mm-hmm. i think that's what the area where we need to revisit and then come up with a plan how can pfdm by the way yeah. i'm not so sure whether the new administration but still yeah. continue yeah. new TFP, yeah? Yeah. Diba? Because yeah. it's an administrative yeah. order, uh, based on what I, I, I've, I've, been asking, uh, no, I've been asking lawyers, how the effectivity of the TFBM, uh, hmm. I don't know, no? I, I think the question is, can the TFBM effectively still continue to operate under this new administration because TFBM yeah. was created by administrative order, it's not an executive yeah. order. So meaning to say, yeah. uh, to the test steps, does it mean also yeah. that the FBM is automatically dissolved? So it, yeah. does it does the new administration under President Marcos needs to issue another administration in order to, to continuously, uh, for the PFM yeah. to continuously perform uh, and yeah. then uh, provide the necessary assistance as demanded under the master plan for Marawi. So yeah. there are a lot of yeah. issues actually that we need to tackle. Uh, uh, so going back to your question, the delay yeah. yet i think the the framing the structure in itself uh tfbm has no absolute capacity in, in terms of handling its most specific budget intended for Marabis. so the the problem also is about you know it's how do we uh go about in terms of the system that is already in place yeah. the current system uh, i'm talking about the current system yeah. yeah, you already mentioned it also, Congressman. No? Um, we are 30 a month into the new administration. Um, expectedly, malami pang mga uh, hitches or like siguro hiccups in the transition from one government to another. But uh, before we talk about that in in, in specifics, no, um, three years into the into the transition, um, into the barm. What's the state of the Bank Samoro now? And I know that's a heavy ask from you, <laughs> um, but but for our listeners and viewers, siguro to at least get a, a gist of of um, what's what's going on. 
Uh, it depends on your question, Bea. What are you trying to ask of me? Uh, is it about the transition period? Is it about you know the political dynamics happening in the region right now? But I, I, to be safe, I can I, I, I can you know I can say that uh, by by I don't know by virtue of the extension of the transition mm. period from supposedly we need uh, we were scheduled to hold the election I think this year, no, last May, but yes. it was extended by the 18th Congress. To 2025, so the BTA has uh, additional three years, uh, purposely uh, to use this, uh, no, to use this additional time to enact the remaining codes, no, because that's precisely the mandate of the transition government, MILF led transition government, uh, to enact the six major codes, no. Uh, when um, Prior to my election to this office, to this current office, we were able to enact uh, three education code, administrative code, uh, civil service code, uh, and uh, I think no? if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. And so we need, the BTA also needs to, well, needs to enact another, another, the other three uh, electoral code, yeah. revenue code, and the local government. Uh, and so I, I, I think there are also challenges. Uh, yeah. I'm not saying that you know uh, the transition period is per, is you know perfect, uh, but there are challenges, more challenges perhaps than we can probably imagine. And we already expected this prior to the actual establishment yeah. of the Bank of Moro government because um, based the mismo structure of the government is. Uh, has been changed, you no, know, from yeah. the ARMM, where yeah. where it was actually patterned after the national you know, uh, structure. Mm -hmm. You have the executive, uh, legislative, and the judiciary. Now in the BARM, you have a mixture of the executive and the legislative powers because mm -hmm. you have a parliamentary setup. That in itself yeah. is already a challenge of how to transition from arm to BARM. Yeah. Not to mention yeah. also uh, other uh, issues of covering the uh, pooling of all the needed manpower, you know, technical manpower uh, that you need to hire. So that's another level of uh, level of you know, challenges. And we never expected that during the you know during the, the onset of the BARM region, yeah, we faced a major you know, uh, challenge in terms of our health security. Yeah. So that actually yeah. added to the, the you know, yeah. problem at the time. Yeah. Uh, and so uh, currently, the, the Bank Samuro Transition Authority is doing its work in, uh, yeah. in putting up institutions that are needed to uh, facilitate a smooth transfer from the ones that we had in the arm mm -hmm. to a parliamentary yeah. setup. Uh, yeah. And prior to the 2025 election, we hope that we can they can already enact these two additional codes. But as part yeah. from that is how this new how this central government and I'm talking about yeah. uh, the national government and the uh, uh, regional government um, can actually amplify and make use and capitalize on the IGRB mechanic mechanism under the. Yeah. No? Because this would actually pave the way on how we essentially uh, uh, put the, uh, you know, a, a strike a connection and coordination and, and come up with a coherent uh, 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 services, no? come up with the coherent services uh, in terms of delivery no? ng ating mga community guys sa ating mga communities. Pag una, buo at na-activate na nang maayos ang mga IGRB. Uh, intergovernmental yeah. relations board and there are several yeah. IGRBs. No? You have the intergovernmental energy board, uh, you have the intergovernmental fiscal board and on the part of the legislation, on the part of legislation, um, I, I think this uh, this congress, in the 19th congress, uh, mm -hmm. should put an info, should put uh, a priority on activating the Philippine Congress uh, Bangsamore Parliamentary Forum. So that mm -hmm. uh, laws that are enacted by the mm -hmm. parliament and laws that have similarities or in conflict uh, with laws that are enacted by the house or by the senate by congress should be stressed out and should be uh, resolved. Mm -hmm. you know? uh, 
in order to avoid creating abs legal absurdities in terms of the in yeah. terms of application and implementation. So, doon yeah. yung kailangan din natin focus. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Sir, uh, kakatapos lang ng first state of the nation address ni President Marcos. Um, one of the things that me, I, and a lot of people were looking forward to was uh, kumbaga, clear policy direction or, or, or yung say niya kumbaga, sa direction of, of the BARM because you know, transition pa nga naman. Uh, unfortunately, it, it wasn't really spelled out. What th does, this, does this have an impact on the transition or, may, or maybe that's just the naysayer speaking also? Well, the transition period has already been, I don't know, and the, I hold it all, has already been identified. You know, whether President mm -hmm. Marcos mentioned it in his song yeah. or not, the na yan na 2025 yung, ano, yung VTA, you know, Parliament. Uh, but of course, all, everything that uh, he has mentioned in his song uh, also covers some of the concerns. No? Yeah. Uh, because the, the approach really is on midterm, uh, midterm fiscal framework plan on how to evaluate. Mm -hmm trade uh, and also yeah. invigorate local trade and come up with more revenue etc as a as a means to, as a way to respond to the effects of the pandemic uh, highlighting the participation of uh, and the industry of the MSMEs no and and mm. this covers a lot of things in terms of area no which includes of course Mindanao in in my district in my area where you yeah. need also to talk about this process, as you've mentioned, you also need to talk about the ongoing reconstruction and rehabilitation of Marawi City. Yeah. Where, where yeah. do this you know, issue come in, in this uh, new administration? Yeah. But we are confident that uh, the campaign platform of this new administration under President Marcos is unity. You know? uh, and so we presume that uh, the, the messaging uh, to unite the entire country uh, also is, is already an you know, already uh what's called this it's already covered no issue of the peace process and integration although it has not been mentioned uh mas maganda yeah. sana no i was waiting no yeah. mas maganda sana na, na mentioned yeah. talaga yun because um ongoing commitment kasi to ng philippine government and philippine state yes uh yes. farm farm is not born out of just a mere imagination no? this is a yeah. remember this is a long struggle and sabi nga namin, for the longest time, it is not uh, uh, served on a uh, table platter, sabi nga, no? Uh, it's actually mm -hmm. the result of the series of discussions, activities, uh, and peace agreements throughout uh, the past administration. Yeah. So it's the commitment yeah. really of the state, Philippine State, to deliver uh, agreed points uh, under uh, two existing treaties, which is, which are the, the, the framework agreement on the Bank of Samoro and the comprehensive yeah. uh, on the Bank of Samoro. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Congressman, you mentioned yung long struggle. We'll talk about that a little more in a bit, but I wanted to clarify muna because there is a purported faction of the MILF now calling on President Marcos to replace members of the Bank of Samoro Transition Authority. How do you make sense of that? Or how should we make sense of that? Because um, obviously we're outsiders. We don't know the dynamics. We don't understand what's going on uh, really uh, on the ground, right? Well, I do not assume expertise on the matter because i myself is not really uh yeah. a card you know a member of the uh, milf yeah but judging yes. from afar and objectively yeah. looking at the situation within uh, the ranks no i think milf um uh the legitimacy of their group actually and i'm talking about party to the signing of the these two agreements not the cab and the pub uh is actually the members of the central committee so that's what I believe in, and that's what yeah. really is uh, MILF is all about. No? Uh, yung Central yeah. Committee talaga. Uh, and so, yeah. sino yung mga members ng Central Committee? These are the current uh, heads uh, of ministries uh, and, and other agencies of the current uh, Bangsamoro, MILF-led Bangsamoro Transition Government. So whatever the fraction, uh, or, or faction, I'm sorry, faction within the yeah. group or for you know, yung nakikita natin, uh, I'm sure that the MILF, having through a lot of 
you know, yeah. having to a lot of experiences, and I think they are already master in terms of negotiation. No, uh, it's it's a thing that they need to resolve within themselves. No, but the effect of this dynamics, no, within the MILM, I should say, and this is where we should step in, impacts greatly on the MI of the bar to deliver, no. Uh, not only to the government, mm. the liberal boss, but also uh, to the people, where yeah. their constituencies. Let us look at the MIA, the Bank Samoro Transition Authority on two levels. No? Political track, I know my many experts yeah. have been discussing this, political track and the normalization track. Focus on yeah. the normalization track. The normalization track involves the commissioning process. And the party mm. to the CAB, the signing, is actually the central members of the central committee of the MILM. Yeah. They have the mandate and obligated to turn over fire you know, and the commission their uh, camps into uh, uh, civilian uh, communities. I think we need to uh, highlight that we are obliga uh, obligated to deliver these promises because they are signatory. So, dun lang natin makikita kung how do we value, uh, you know, the, uh, the MILF as a mean, as a as an organization. Organization now, uh, head uh, that now that are now uh, the organization that are heading, or organization that is heading the transition period. And so far as uh, changes, if there's going to be a changes and how this would impact the normalization process. So, yung sana yung ipopokus sana natin, no? I, again, objectively, yeah. I'm judging from afar. Yeah. A Congressman, you mentioned the, the, the long struggle uh, of, I think, Mindanao in general, but specifically the Bangsamoro, obviously. For better or worse, uh, the, the term transitional justice, it's it should be something that all Filipinos are familiar with, but the reality is not, not a lot really understand what it is outside of the basic definition. So when we do talk about transitional justice, what do we mean? Well, it happens in many other countries, no? like in Canada, mm. no? like in the yeah. United States. They've given also uh, providing access to education, etc., and actually claiming and owning to the false. Uh, we're not we're not actually forcing any particular administration here, but uh, yeah. what happens in the past, uh, yeah. Yeah. that proportionally, uh, disproportionately no, uh, impacted lives of people in terms yeah. of access to education, in terms of uh, their claim over their lands, uh, uh, you know, uh, that, that brought out so many inequalities over the years. Uh, yeah. Should also be an uh, Should also be addressed, uh, and to uh, to look up to at least to discuss by this Congress, by this current Congress. Um, nangyari na ito at ginawa na ito sa ibang bansa, uh, yeah. sa Canada, dun sa mga reservations, sa mga areas nila yeah. for the indigenous peoples in many ano, and even even to some extent in the United States. Uh, and, and so I think it's more of the non-recurrence, no? yeah. uh, providing framework. Because we cannot do anything about the past. But it happened. Yeah. Na. But we have the opportunity to, to ano, we have the opportunity to put up a system where non-recurrence is, ano, uh, yeah. is ensured, no? na hindi na mangyari uh, in the future. Yeah. Uh, marap, yeah. marap natin naririnig na uh, history repeat itself. Diba? Yeah. Sana, hindi in the worst form of way. Uh, yeah. uh, so that's actually the intention of the law, uh, yeah. it, that for the non-recurrence of, you know, of some of the uh, things that happened in the past that brought inequalities yeah. uh, to many, yeah. uh, many communities, which yeah. unfortunately, which unfortunately, uh, many of the concerns uh, ay nasa aming community, nasa aming area, sa Muslim area. Yeah. I mean, it's not just hopefully hindi lang recurrence or repeat 2.0 ng past, but to truly learn from it and make up for um, the past. Because that's a very good point now. We can't change what's happened in the... And, and, and thank you for pointing that out, that this isn't just about one administration, but it's centuries, really, of injustice uh, towards yeah, a people, right? Yeah. I mean, well, I mean, 
Balikan ko lang yung first na line ko kanina. Yung best natin na teacher is our experience. So, ganun yun. Yeah. In order for us not yeah. to uh, repeat the same yeah. mistakes. So, kailangan talaga magkaroon yeah. ng, uh, system, ng system up for cohesive na ano, framework. Yeah. Uh, this show deals a lot with history um, and, and specifically looking back at history in order to make sense of what's going on currently. No? And I think one thing that I uh, regretfully only realized in my 30s is that um, our own history is something that we don't really, we're not very familiar with. Um, and this isn't just a commentary on the K-12 na, di ba, ang daming nagsasabi, mga bata ngayon, hindi alam yung history natin, but um, shamefully, it took me a long time to fully grasp Philippine history in a way. And even when I was in Malawi during the campaign period, I, I talked to people who said it wasn't until college where they actually learned about their own history and the details of the injustices towards the Bangsamoro. Um, so when we talk about transitional justice, absolutely, we need to remember. Memory is key. How should we correct this? Sobrang laking gap niya, Congressman, eh, diba? Na, diba, parang... Um, the average Filipino, it might take them adulthood. It, 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 parang adulthood lang nila na, na nagigets talaga kung, uh, kung ano yung, yung centuries of oppression, centuries of kumbaga, pagiging dehado uh, ng groups in the Philippines. Sabi ko nga, correcting the wrongs in the past, what happened in the past, uh, cannot be changed. No, It happens. It's not part of history. That's why it's called history, no? Uh, something that we need to learn from. Uh, and in the United States, up to now, uh, yung mga African-American have been consistently, you know, maski nabigyan sila ng platform to be uh, equally represented in their government, there's still that uh, wounds that cannot, that still needs to be addressed and still needs to be healed. No? It's an open wound, actually, if you go back to history. Yeah. Our perspective, really, it's not, to, uh, not, 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 uh, as a source to again create more chaos uh, or, or yeah. to at least to put the government in the shadowy figure yeah. na puros lang kayo ang may kasalanan yeah. uh, at the framework yeah. of the transitional justice system. and by the way this is part of the UN it's part of the the comprehensive agreement on the on the Bangsamoro it's not something that mm. we wanted sana to to introduce as a stand alone piece of legislation Again, uh, born out of my own imagination, but this is actually an obligation yeah. by the Philippine state also na magkaroon ng transitional uh, justice commission. And that is part of the yeah. uh, part part yeah. of the agreement. No? It's also in, in the UK. So legally, legally, uh, it mandates the, the government uh, to enact this commission. Uh, yeah. And on the cultural and social perspective, again, uh, apart from the non-recurrence, we also really... Part of the non we also need to uh, know, uh, at least uh, create a platform where discussion on histories are not sanctioned. I'm, I'm not, I'm not, uh, are not, uh, nitagdon. Hindi siya nili limit, no? Uh, hindi yeah. tayo dapat naga handpick no yung dapat natin malaman. Yeah. But history is not to talk about the, these things. History and for the music new generation we for the new generation to enjoy so, uh, yeah. it's not history should not be limited to a certain number of people but history is for the posterity to enjoy so, so i yeah. think that kind of framework specific issues so kami yeah. Uh, sa, um, sa aming area, sa aming community na yeah. uh, hanggang ngayon ay patuloy pa namin gustong ipagpapag-usapan. Remember, according yeah. to Cardinal Quevedo no, of Mindanao, mm. there are he described the injustices against the Bangsamoro in two to four levels. Inju- injustice mm-hmm. against the Moro history, injustice against mm-hmm. the Moro political a sovereignty, injustice against the territorial integrity of the Muslim community, injustice against the social identity. So even the Catholic Church in the person of Cardinal, yeah. uh, uh, ano, no, Cardinal Quebec, you know, do admit mm-hmm. that there is an ongoing narrative and ongoing discussion of how do we 
address the injustices committed against the people. And we are talking about not uh, so specific epoch or specific administration. Uh, yeah. Yeah. You know, when it's in the government. But we're talking about century old uh, uh, injustices and Injustices does not only mean abuses, huh? injustices in terms yeah. of lack of access to certain places yeah. uh, that yeah. resulted to uh, in, in, inequality, no? social inequality yeah. and economic inequality. Yeah, it's a difficult history, but but absolutely. But it should be something that all of us, not just the Bangsamoro people, should grapple with. Um, Although, mejo easier said than done at that yun for for to to ask people to confront a difficult past or a difficult without the baggage of guilt. Because yun ating yun asum na mga tao, you know, we're saying that you should be guilty. It's not so much that, but it's just really understanding. Yeah, precisely, that's the that's the reason. That's that's exactly the point, eh? Because for yung guilt na sinasabi mo that we carry, no? Uh, I think it only. The, the guilt can only be you know can only be solved and addressed at least can be reduced if there's an acceptance that things really happened in the past and what should we do yeah. about it yeah yeah absolutely Congress it's actually our young... approach that matters yeah it's our it's the way Congressman, I won't hold you back any longer because I know you have, as we are recording this, you have session to attend to at the Batasang Papansa. But siguro to cap off this interview, because this show is precisely about making sense of the world in front of us, our events in front of us. Ikaw, personally, when you try to make sense of the world around you, uh, either work or personal life, what do you do? What do you watch? What do you listen to? What do you turn to? Apart from Netflix, <laughs> <laughs> well, yung 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 regular stuff. Maraming mga gantang series ngayon sa Netflix, ha? Like yung mga doke sila, okay. Uh, well, what I do, well, um, I I don't know actually because as a, prop, as, as a first termer, I need to be more aggressive, no? And be more assertive assertive in in pushing for our advocacies no uh so well i i i as a part of ano, as a part of me, keeping my sanity intact uh yun nga in regular stuff i do watch the, ano, but but ultimately uh ano, no, they, uh, i see this ano, uh, this chance no of representing uh, yeah. the first district as yeah. a huge opportunity you know uh, for me, uh, to really push on the advocacy on Marawi rehabilitation and the peace process, uh, because I believe this is the only time where there are a lot of challenges that, that beset my community, no, and Muslim Mindanao. You have the transition period, uh, you have the Marawi competition yeah. and the Marawi ongoing rehabilitation. You also have an issue on, you also have an issue on the handling of the recently the handling of the of the pilgrims no in the 2022 there's yeah. there seems to be a lot of mishaps and a lot of trouble yeah. that confronted our pilgrims uh in saudi arabia recently so sunod, sunod and also the issue on the on Las Oreco, no uh, i mean our distribution mm. facility the impending cutting off of the right so, so all of these things um pushes me to be more assertive, no, uh, and be more industrious uh, as, as a legislator. So, yun ang nagbibigay sa akin, I think, no. If that's what you're asking me, that's what's keeping keep me going now. I don't see this as a problem. I see this as an opportunity. And of course, nanonood ako ng mga Netflix series and yung mga yung kanoob. I, I, I lalatag natin. Itatanong ko kay congressman off air kung ano yung mga series recommendations niya. And we'll also be trying to, we'll, we'll link to resources for you to read. We'll ask your office for recommendations on what to read in case people do want to learn about uh, the idea of transitional justice, what's going on in the Bangsamoro. Um, kasi our, our goal is ultimately for people to, kumbaga, jump off point lang to, for people to learn more about Philippine democracy and Philippine politics. Thank you, Congressman Adyong, for your time. We look forward. I look forward to I your next steps. Your... Yes. 
just an uh, let's ahead, like, add on. No? Uh, I, I'm also optimistic at the same time. I'm also optimistic at the same time that this piece, uh, this piece of legislation that we introduced, uh, will be put, uh, no, uh, will be at least no treated with equal uh, no, no, attention in terms of priority. No, because I'm I'm confident with the leadership of the House, no, under Speaker Martin Romualdez, uh, yeah. because he was the majority leader. Remember, he was the majority leader when the Marawi Compensation Bill was enacted in the 18th Congress. Yeah. It was pushes it for its final enactment, yung extension period ng Bank Sabra Transition Authority. So he's well endowed with knowledge and with wisdom and, you know, uh, the technical uh, know-how on how to push all this yeah. legislation concerning Marawi and the Bank Sabra Forward. And a very huge confidence in the ability of our majority, current majority leader, kasi being a Mindanaoan himself, uh, as Congressman Dalipe, being a Mindanaoan himself, is from Zamboanga City. He's very, he also experienced the Zamboanga siege. He, he knows yeah. the deep sentiments of the people in Manila, particularly in our regions. So I'm optimistic that all these pieces of legislation that we discussed here uh, will be given yeah. priority uh, and due attention by this current leadership of the House. Yeah. All of us, sir, nagikan sa Mindanao, nag hope, and with bated breath. Kung, uh, what the 19th Congress will do for Mindanao nga. Tinood na, tinood na, Bea. Anong tagahuat kung sa what's in support for us. It's not that no for Mindanao, but for the whole country. Yeah, yeah. Nigawas na ang bisaya. But we will end with that. Um, kay na apay session, may session pa si Congressman in a few hours. Thank you again for joining us, Congressman Adyong. And thank you for watching. And that has been this week's episode of 36 Years with Congressman Adyong. Like I said earlier, we'll be linking resources in the story page somewhere here. I uh, will link you to uh, readings if you want on traditional justice, on the Bangsamoro, documentaries, bayan, um, other podcast episodes, maybe articles from Rappler and other publications. I will also try to get from Congressman Adyong on your Netflix recommendations. Niya, uh, since you said it earlier. So, we spell out na natin. So, thank you again for watching. This has been 36 years, and I'll see you next week. It's been Beko Pen. Bye.